movie buffs welcome back to the movie bay it's halloween season so with that being said i pulled a whole bunch of movies down that we could take a look at you can get some ideas for your little halloween watch parties if you have those or just some movies you can watch throughout october now i got a little bit of i got different types of horror movies and then some of these might not even be horror movies everybody can't do bone chilling horror movies i know i know somebody personally who can't watch horror movies before bedtime or they have night terrors and this is a grown adult so i got some stuff that's scary scary and then i got some stuff that's not so scary it's all fun so let's dive in. there's a whole bunch here i don't know how many i just pulled a whole bunch at first i was going to do 31 movies for 31 days of october i think it's 31 and uh but it just turned into more so without further ado let's dive in and take a look at some scary movies some creepy movies and just some movies that are a little bit make you feel a little bit uneasy, all right? So let's dive in. We're gonna start this party off with a movie that I really like. It's not super scary, it's not really scary at all, but it's a good scary movie, okay? And that's Snoop Dogg and Bones. This is a really, this is a really decent movie. To have Snoop Dogg in the lead role is, is actually not bad. Uh, you got Clifton Powell in here, Pamela Greer, Pam Greer. It's it's a pretty it's a it's a decent watch. I'll put it that way. It's not mind blowing. It's not a movie that you would probably talk about a lot, but it's something to watch. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the month of October. Snoop Dogg's Bones. Here's another one that I that I think is uh, you know day appropriate. Cause I'm not gonna call Halloween a holiday. I just call it a day. This is definitely a day appropriate, and this is from Vest, uh, this is a, a restaurant release. This is a pretty cool release too. I got Shivers, David Cronenberg's Shivers. This is a very good movie. Very, very good, scary, uneasy type of movie. It's an older movie, and it still holds up pretty good. We have The Shining. Here's one that's not really a horror movie, but when I watch this movie, me, I know for a fact that this is a thriller. I know that. I'm not trying to pull, pull the wool over you guys' eyes. I know this is a thriller, but... When I think of horror movies, this one pops into my head often, and that's Seven. Definitely not a horror movie. Don't beat me up in the comments section. Seven is not a horror movie. I know, but when I think about horror movies, this pops into my head. So I said, why not? This could be for somebody who want to watch a movie that's a little bit on the creepy side, but not really scary. You know what I'm saying? You can watch this and go to bed. You can. Um, and why I picked this one? The atmosphere, the dark atmosphere is always raining. It's always, it's always dreary in the movie. It's very, the movie itself, the, the movie itself is, is dreary, but the backdrop of the movie is also just depressingly dreary. Think about it. Out, the outside scenes that they do shoot is always dark. It's always raining. And then when it was in, um, John Doe's apartment, it was just really creepy and eerie in there with all the books and stuff. Just a real creepy movie, so I included Seven. Definitely not a horror movie, but it's definitely a good movie that you can watch for the day. Here's one. I got a couple that's centered around kids, too, because Halloween is a kid's holiday. Based, well, not, not holiday. It's a kid's day, basically. And I got Come Play. I only pulled a few. There's quite a few scary movies centered around kids. It's quite a few. I didn't want to pull them all. Here's one, The Visit. Really good one. One of M. Night's best, in my opinion. And like I said before, when it comes to M. Night, I'm like, I used to be 50-50. Now I'm probably 60-40 in like versus dislike. Here's one. This, this is definitely not a horror movie, but it's got... This is if Black Phone, which we're going to do next. This movie, um, Summer of 84, is if... Black Phone in the movie Disturbia had a baby, you would get Summer 84. Next up, Black Phone. Again, not a horror movie, but a horror movie. Not a horror movie, just a, a real creepy movie. I guess you could call it a horror movie, but there you go. Here, uh, Leslie, this is the last one. This is The Boy Behind the Door. This is Shutter Original. This is a pretty solid movie. You'll like this one. If you check this one out, you're definitely going to like this one. Now, back on to the horror movies. This one is definitely a, a horror movie, for sure. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. It's a very gross, 
very disturbing horror movie, in my opinion. And that's Evil Dead Rises. Wow. I mean, Evil Dead Rises, this right here, not only is it scary, it's just gross. The kills in here are just ridiculous. The scene with the cheese grater. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> oh, man. Evil Dead. This is a banger, too. Now, on this set right here, I'm going with the, the, the original Nightmare on M Elm Street from 84, I do believe. And then we're going to go with Dream Warriors. There's a few others that's good, but I'm just focusing on it too. I like uh, 1 and 3 the best, but there's enjoyment with um, pretty much all of these. It's enjoyment with these. You can find some enjoyment with all of them. This here is a triple pack. This will definitely feed your need if you want to you know, get your get a watch little watch party on and have and have three decent movies without really doing worrying about it too much. You got Friday the thirteenth. This is the remake, the killer cut. To me, I like this better than all Friday the thirteenth movies. I'm not a huge Friday the thirteenth guy. I'm more of a out of my horror, my classic horror, out of between Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, and Mike Myers. I'm more of a Freddy and Mike Myers guy versus Jason Voorhees. Don't get me wrong, Friday the 13th is a decent franchise, but I'm more of a Mike Myers guy between those two. So yeah, Friday the 13th, this remake is actually pretty decent. I enjoyed that. This Nightmare on M Street, I trashed this movie quite a bit. Again, it's not a trash movie. I trash it because I just think it could have been better. And Friday, uh, Freddy versus Jason, not bad at all. To be honest with you, not bad. I actually enjoyed that one. And here's, I think this came out in 2018, and this is by far the best of the last trilogy, and this is Halloween. I think this is Halloween 2018, we'll call it. Definitely the best one from that trilogy, definitely, by far. The second one was okay. The third one, I'm not really sure what they was doing with that one, but this was a really, really good Halloween movie. <sighs> the Exorcist, to me, this is like the gold standard of horror movies it may not be the best because it's dated but it's still a good movie even if you watched it today you would still get some enjoyment out of this this movie gave horror movies legitimacy there was horror movies before this absolutely but this is the one that made people in hollywood stand up and realize hey we got a cash cow here with this horror shit just like i'm going to say the mcu gave credibility and credence and validated comic book movies to a whole new level again there was comic book movies before the mcu but they're the ones that kind of said made everybody stand up and say hey wait a minute there's definitely something here unfortunately the industry overdid it with the with the comic book movies they oversaturated the market and they started making the movies not as good so that particular segment of hollywood they're going to have to do some work to turn that around they really are wolverine deadpool was a good start okay back to this the Exorcist 3, you can totally skip The Exorcist 2, watch the first one, come straight to this one, and you'll be okay. This is a really rock-solid horror movie. The first three Scream movies, I enjoyed them. Scream 4 was actually was really good. I don't really take issue with the franchise at all, except for one movie. And it was just, I, I spoke on that one. I didn't pull that one for this video, but I spoke on that one before. I only took issue with one of these movies. And it sure as hell wasn't one through... I think this one is, all right, we'll see in a minute. But this one through three set, you can't go wrong. You can't go wrong with four. A lot of people didn't like four. Four wasn't my favorite, but one through three, I enjoyed them evenly. This one here, I think this is the fifth one, or this might be the, the sixth one, I think. I got to take a look here. Hold on one second, guys. I'm looking. Oh, no, that's six. This is five. I enjoyed this one. I didn't care too much for six. I really enjoyed this one. This one was pretty good. Six, some of the kills in there was just... Some of the kills that should have been kills, they wasn't kills. <laughs> Here you go. I, I, I bashed that movie when I first got it. So you can go back and take a look. I think the video, is, it was a pickup video that I did. It, the, when I watched that movie, I was not really feeling what they did in that movie. But anyway, here's... Uh, a trio of horror movies that I think is actually pretty good, but they're not really disturbing horror, horror movies. There's there some decent watch. This is, These are decent watches. They're nothing special. But again, if you want to watch something, you want to watch a complete trilogy that's not too intense with the horror, Wishmaster 1, 2, one, two and 3. These aren't bad watches. They really, they, they're cheesy as shit, but they're not 
super bad. You can watch those and you can watch those and go to sleep. You really can. Uh, we got the Amityville Horror, the original. There's a whole bunch of Amityville movies that came after this. I'm actually fond of two of the ones that came after this, but this to me is still the Cadillac of Amityville movies. And I speak on these movies a lot because they're just that damn good. I love them. Sinister 1 and 2. You can't go wrong with these. Okay, this is, I think I got, y'all, I, I think y'all dragged me for my opinion on this one, but I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm standing, I'm standing my ground. Halloween, H2O, and I, me personally, I dug Resurrection. I'm not saying it was the best. I'm not saying it was top tier. I liked it. And um, H2O, I definitely liked H2O. I think most people liked H2O. It was pretty darn good. And... My favorite Halloweens, out of all the Halloweens, and I don't care, shoot me, whatever you want to do. I'm going with the Rob Zombie Halloween 1 and 2. And I already stated a million times why I like these movies. And I heard everybody else's reason why they hate these movies. And that's fine. You can hate them and I can love them. That's, that's what it is. In the movie community, we're not a monolith. You know, we all have our different tastes and different opinions. I like these movies, particularly the first one, because I think it was a really good origin story. I think they told the origin of Michael Myers beautifully in this movie. I really did. I didn't care too much for the guy they had playing Loomis. I really didn't, but that wasn't the the point of the movie. This was a really good movie. And this was a pretty good follow-up. They were very brutal. They were These Rob Zombie movies were what the other movies weren't. They were extremely brutal, and they was just gory. And I liked it because this guy is a serial killer. I want to see a lot of gore. And Rob Zombie, he delivered. So, yeah, I mean, those are my favorite um, Halloween movies. All right, I had to reposition here. We got a lot to go through. Um, the Conjuring 1 and 2. I prefer the second one. Although I like the first one, I like them probably almost equally. But I really like the second one. It was really, really, really good. The first one was good, too. Don't take me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I'm not taking nothing from it, but I really like the second one. We got Annabelle and Annabelle Creation. Um, Annabelle Comes Home was, it was okay. I, I don't have anything against that, but these are the ones that I prefer. The first one and the second one. Mainly the second one. They really did it right with the second one. It was, this was creepy and it was scary as shit. Here's a horror movie that I really like as a horror movie, but a lot of people, I've been in discussions about this movie before, and some people don't see it as a horror movie. They see it as a sci-fi movie. It's a sci-fi horror movie for sure, just like the first Alien movie. That's a sci-fi horror movie. Jake Gyllenhaal, Rebecca Ferguson, Ryan Reynolds in Life. Now, you guys tell me this is not a horror movie. Damn right this was a horror movie. Kelvin was scary as shit. <laughs> Kelvin, yeah, that was his name. Kelvin was scary as shit, wasn't he? I'm trying to tell you, a life form that could do something like that, definitely scary. This movie was a banger. I liked the way it ended, but I wanted to see at least another movie. With I wanted to see at least a follow-up to this movie. Because the way it ended, it kind of left it open for another one. Imagine if Kelvin stayed, them people, I looked like they was, at the end there, they was going to go to that pod and open it, which he was telling them, don't do it, don't do it. I wanted to see if they opened that pod, what would have happened? It would have been on and popping. Can you imagine a creature like that on Earth? Woo-wee. Anyway, John Carpenter's The Thing. Definitely a great Halloween watch. Speaking of aliens, we're going with the Alien Quadrilogy. But for, for me, for Halloween, I'm going to go with the first one, and I'm going to go with the third one when she's on that prison colony. Those, to me, are closer to horror than the other ones. They, they, they're much closer. All of these movies got a little bit of scariness to them, even the second one. But even though, to me, the second one is, a, is an outright action movie. That To me, it's not a horror movie. It's an outright action movie, which is banging. I loved it. And I think 2 is the fans, the fan favorite out of all of these, these, four, these four movies here. But for the horror aspect, I'm going to go with the first one, and I'm going to go with the third one. Psycho. The original Psycho. Oh, yes. And Psycho 2. This is a great, I mean, this is a good follow-up to Psycho. It really is. Psycho 2 is probably one of the best sequels. 
I'm not going to say the best sequel in movie history. Oh, that's a video idea. Yeah, this has got to be one, one of the best sequels in Hollywood history. It's got to be. It, it's it's got to be. Hands down. I'm, I, I can't really say it is. I got to do further research. But if my money was on the line, this would be in the top 10, maybe top five greatest sequel ever made. Psycho 2. Banging. 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 Banging follow-up. You don't get too many sequels better than this. There is there. I think it might be. I just got to do a little research, but I'm going to come back and do a video on that. But this is a hell of a sequel. It really is. It, it really, really is. Talk to me. This is a this was a pretty decent A24 horror movie. I do like A24. A lot of people like A24. They got some decent stuff out there. Talk to me is is a really good horror movie. Really, really good. You'll like this one. Here's a, here's a horror movie that I always defend and I always stand 10 toes down on this one because a lot of people just don't give it love. Now, I don't hear nobody saying it's corny, but it don't get a lot of love. I get it. Horror is a really, really big genre, probably one of the biggest genres in Hollywood. But And there's a lot of duds in the horror genre, let's be honest. A lot of uh, horror is probably 60-40 trash to good. But the ones that are good are good. And this is a good one here. Darkness Falls. But I think it's a movie that falls by the wayside. But it's really, really scary. If you watch this movie, you're going to like this one. It, it's, it's, to me, it's a, it's a horror banger. And it's a gem. It really is. It's a gem that people just don't really talk about a lot. Oh, man. This one right here. Both of these are good. But we're talking about 13 Ghosts. However, House of Wax is good, too. But 13 Ghosts, this movie is scary. It's 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 creepy to make the, the 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 hairs rise up on your arms. And what I like about this one, the special features that came packed that came packed on the disc, and it's on this one too. But I had the single DVD with the bonus, the narration for the bonus features where they go over each ghost to give you the origin story and how that ghost became a ghost. And the, 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 the guy that they used to voice the narration for that and the slides, it was so freaking creepy. Just listening to the narrator narrate the origin of those ghosts made the, the, the hairs on my arm rise up. 13 Ghosts, banging, banging movie. And it's actually a remake. My Bloody Valentine. This was a pretty decent slasher flick. I ain't have a problem with it. Old school slasher flick. We have a movie that I think Nicole Kidman, to me, now for me, I like Nicole Kidman. I don't think she's the greatest actress in Hollywood, but she's pretty good. She's pretty talented. This, in, again, this to me is her greatest performance that I've seen. And she got some good performances, don't get me wrong. But the others, man, she did such an amazing job in this movie. I mean, I had it on DVD in my collection for years, and when I saw it on Criterion, that flash sale, I jumped on that immediately. Now, I think I got this from Amazon. Still for 50% off, but for 26 bucks, this was a no-brainer right here. The others, this is a fantastic horror movie with a with a with an end that just knock your socks clean off the first time you see it. Fantastic. This ending to me was almost as good as the ending of the sixth sense. Almost. We have another one of my favorites. It's a movie that don't get, well, I'm not going to say this one don't get love. This one don't get hated on it or anything. Neither does Darkness Fall. That doesn't get hated on. It just don't get a lot of love. And this is one that don't get no hate. And it gets a little, it get more love than Darkness Falls. But still, Ghost Ship. This is a, this is a banger. I'm trying to tell you. If you've never seen this one, you need to check this one out. You, 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 you're not going to be uh, disappointed. This will be a good watch for your little watch party for Halloween. A really good exorcism movie. You got Laura Lindley, Tom Wilkerson, the, Ex the Exorcism of Emily Rose. This is a good movie. It really, really is. Check this one out. Check that one out. Yeah, this is a horror movie, but I don't know how scary it is. But I figure I'll throw it in because it's a classic. We got John Carpenter's Christine. Second John Carpenter flick in the, on the list so far, I do believe. We got George C. Scott in Changeling. 
This is a good one too. Old school, but good. A lot of the, a lot of old school horror movies are good. A lot of them. Here's one that I, the first time I saw this when I was a kid, I was a, I was a young buck when I first saw this movie, and it scared the bejeebies out of me. Not so much now, but it's still a really good movie, and we got Pumpkinhead. It's a rock solid horror movie. It really is. This one right here got one of the most brutalest kills I ever seen in a movie. I mean, hands down. I'm trying to think of a kill in a movie that's more freaking brutal than this. Now, I'm not talking about super gory kills like the, the kills in Saw or the kills in uh, just other movies. Like like kills like in The Terrifier. Those, those are just brutal, gory kills. But this one. This kill is something about the way they did that guy in that tunnel, in that in those caves when they was in the caves at the last at the, the probably the last portion of the movie, and that's Bone Tomahawk. It was plenty of good kills in this movie, but it was one. And if you saw the movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm not going to describe the kill because if you've never seen this movie, I advise you to check this one out, especially if you like westerns. This is a different type of western for sure. This is like a like a a, a, a horror western, a western horror movie. But it's one kill in particular in this movie that is, in my opinion, just crazy. That's all I'm going to say. I'm going to leave it at that. It's crazy. And, yeah. It's the kill near the end of the movie when they are in the caves and they got everybody in their little makeshift cages and they pull one guy out and what they do to him is just freaking ridiculous. Whew. Okay. Russell Crowe in The Pope Exorcist. Now, this movie, it it's scary, but it's, it's it's almost what they did with the CGI almost made the shit a comedy. It, to be honest with you, it's a good movie. It's a lot of good parts to it, but they overdid it with the CGI in certain parts of the movie. I think if they do follow this movie up because they left plenty of room at the end for more, I heard this movie was ideally was going to be a trilogy, but we'll see how successful this one was in the box office. I think it was. I think I don't, I didn't really track this one a lot, but the CGI, some of the CGI was just stupid in here. And I think the CGI brought this movie down where if they would have just toned down the CGI, this would have been a really good movie, a really good one. Just way too much CGI. Over the top CGI. And this one here, you could probably put on a list like this for Halloween, you could probably put any zombie movie on here and it, and it, and it would jive well. It really would. Zombies, Halloween, they go together. But I wanted this one because it was something about this one that I like more than... This isn't my favorite zombie movie. It's my number two in my collection. But for this video, I think this is better suited. And that's the crazies. Uh, man, what can I say about this movie? I mean, is is this one the, the the zombie creatures? They're they're just way more intimidating in this one than than in others. They are more aware. I'm not gonna say they are as aware as me and you, but they are very aware in this movie, and that's what adds to the creepiness. Um, movies like um, Day of the Dead and all of that kind of other stuff. Um, dead. A lot, just a lot of the other zombie movies that we're used to. This one, the zombies are more aware than in a lot of other movies. That's what make this one a little bit more edge of the seat for me. The crazies. I think this is really appropriate for this list. Again, like I said, it's not the best zombie movie out there in my collection. I will hold this as number two for sure. But yeah, just. If you if you saw this movie, you know exactly what I'm talking about. These zombies are different than other zombies. They're more aware. I'm not again. They're not as sharp as me and you are, but they are fully aware of what's going on around them, and that adds to that creepiness. All right, here's a franchise that shot itself in the ass with the last two installments, but the first two installments was really good. The first the first two actually I would consider bangers to be honest with you. The first two, and that's Jeepers Creepers one and two. Jeepers Creepers and Jeepers Creepers 2. I would consider the first one an absolute banger and the second one is a, is a banger. Three, uh-uh. Four, get the fuck out of here. But anyway, Jeepers Creepers 1 and 2. Then we got an, a series that I really enjoy. 
And I didn't have a problem with these first three. I really didn't have a problem with them at all. Insidious. Insidious Chapter 2. And Insidious Chapter 3. I didn't have a problem with none of these. I really didn't. They were all solid, enjoyable watches. Uh, me and my youngest daughter went to the theater to see all three of these. So I didn't have a problem with none of these. And we even went to go see Last Key, but that was... Last key was butt cheek and the red door was butt cheek too. So, all right, Chucky. So we're going with Child's Play. I I prefer. I like the first one out of all of them, even though there's enjoyment with a lot of these. With it's enjoyment with all of them, but I like the first one. All right, that's my favorite out of all of these. Two was all right. We got the original Pet Cemetery. The best one in the Pet Cemetery series. Two was actually one and two. Then everything after that, the remake. Uh, the last one they did with uh, basically talking about I forget the name of it, the name of it. It's right behind me. Uh, Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. There you go. So Pet Cemetery Bloodlines. I didn't really care too much for that one, but the original Pet Cemetery. This is a good movie, and it's a better book. Like this is a this is a prime example of. The book being better than the movie. There's very few movies that's better than the book, especially when it comes to horror. Because when well, we talked about this before, when you when you're watching a horror movie, it's different than when you read in a book, especially if you read in a book like most people read books alone, you know, without distraction, especially if it's a really good book. You're gonna watch that, you're gonna read that book by yourself without distraction in a really quiet place, and your mind is gonna be working with that book. So it's a different, it's a different vibe reading a really good horror book. Versus watching a really good horror movie. It is. Trust me. The original It. I like this one. I'm sorry guys. I This is this is by far the my favorite version of It. I like it more than the remake. The remake they broke it into two movies. And to me it's still not better than this one. I prefer this one. Creepy. Especially if you're a person. There's a lot of people scared of clowns. I forget what that condition is called. But it's a real thing. People been diagnosed with it people are afraid of clowns and if you're afraid of clowns this is the gold standard right here i'm trying to tell you you scared of clowns that will scare the shit out of you the original candy man candy halloween how could i not put candy man on the list oh man hereditary i spoke highly on this movie a couple of times this this right here Here's one that, oh man, and they act, uh, there's a second one coming for this one. I was like, yeah, I can see that. Smile. This one, now this is one that caught me totally off guard. This movie came out of nowhere. Me and, me and my wife was just flipping through looking for something to watch, and we came across this, I think, on Max. And we watched it. We was like, oh, oh, this was really, really good. And it didn't take long to get down to business, too. Within the first two, three minutes of the movie, Probably less than that, the prior the first minute. This movie got right down to business. No, there wasn't no lead up. It just got right to it. I like movies like that. I like any movie that get right down to the business within a couple of minutes. I like that. So that, that was one reason why I liked it. It was a great story. It, it was plenty scary. And the movie just got right down to business. They didn't, they didn't play around. Um, The Ring and the Ring 2. Yo. Both of these are bangers. But that first one, when old girl came out of that TV screen, yo, listen. <laughs> the ring one and two, you can't go wrong. But that first one, when old girl, like I said, when she came out of that TV screen, yo. <laughs> All right, I'm just going to leave it at that. And then last but not least, this is a franchise that I really like. There's a box set over, I think Arrow put it out. That I want to get, but uh, it's it's um, it's region B, I think. But it's a 4K slash Blu-ray box, but it's not. You know, Blu-rays aren't region free. The 4Ks, obviously, they're region free, but I don't think all the movies are on the 4K. Or I would have imported that set because I would just watch the 4Ks. But again, neither here nor there. The Grudge, scary. The Grudge Two, scary. And The Grudge 3, scary. Listen, these three movies are, they, they, these movies are scary as shit. 
I enjoy them. If you don't like the Grudge 1, 2, and 3, I, I don't know what to tell you. Like I said, in the Bluetooth community, we're not a monolith. We all don't like the same things. But, man, these right here, I'm trying to tell you, the Grudge, the, these three Grudge. Now, they did a a fourth movie. I was that, I think that was supposed to be a prequel, if I'm not mistaken. That wasn't good. But these three, because I have the fourth one behind me. I watched it. It was just all right. It couldn't hold the match to these. Especially, I can't even say especially because I dug all of these. I really did. But the first one, I think, was the one that was probably the scariest. But all three of these are really good. So that's everything that we're going to watch throughout the month of October. It's plenty more. I got more. I couldn't pull everything. Uh, we would have been here for an hour right now. That kept us busy for, what, 30? I'm looking at the clock here. 30 minutes, almost 31 minutes. That's a lot of stuff. If stuff that you like isn't here, that's fine. I mean, again, I got tons of stuff behind me. I couldn't pull everything. I just pulled some stuff that I thought would make for a good video, and boom, that's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next one.